All right, let's take a look at. Let's take a look at uh, inclined plane with pulleys. So we have a block of mass, okay, M1, which is 3.7 kilograms, and then we have M2, which is 2.3 kilograms, okay? And then this thing is on a frictionless incline at angle of 30 degrees and is connected by a cord over a massless frictionless pulley to the second block of this. All right. We're going to have to do a free body diagram and draw some force vectors on this. All right. So what is the magnitude of the acceleration of each block? Well, you have to think about what force, there's, there's the tug of war going on here, right? There's the tug of war of this pulling this way and this pulling this way. And there's, you know, we don't know which one's going to win. So if we were to look at this, you know, it's not FG that's pulling. It's actually FGX that's going to be pulling on this direction. So it's not 100% of weight. It's going to be pulling on this way. It is the component, X component of the weight that's going to be pulling in this direction, right? This, however, is the weight of this M2 that's going to be pulling down. So you're going to have to compare these two forces to see which one's going to win to see the direction of motion, okay? So to find direction of motion, compare two forces, right? Okay? And those forces are basically Here, is your FG, and then we have FGY, and then we have FGX, okay? So FGX or the block one, this has to be compared with here we have FG2 and we have tension here. And this tension is the exact same value as this tension right here. These two tensions have the same tensions. And we have one more force for M1, and that is the normal force going this way. Maybe I should have made this FG a different color so that the FG is dark blue. So you must you must compare right F G X1 and and FG2 to see which one was going to win the tug of war. Okay, so here FGX1. How do we calculate that? Well, my FGX of mass one is FG times sine of 30 degrees. And that is M1 sine 30, oops, and that is M1 G sine 30, I mean. So here, mass 3.7 times 9.8 times sine of 30 degrees. I did not put any negative 9.8 in here. Make sure you understand that. I did not give any direction yet. I'm just looking for straight out magnitude. Got that?
That's very important. People start sticking negative 9.8s in there, and that's not good. Don't put any negative signs in your G. So if you work this one out, I think you get something like 18.13 newtons for your FGX of the mass 1. Okay? Well, let's take a look at FG2. That is just M2G, and that is equal to uh, 23, no, 2.3 times 9.8. Again, I did not put negative 9.8 in here. I just put 9.8. So my FG2, if you work that out, comes out to 22.5 newtons. So who's going to win? If I had tug of war between these two forces, 22.5 and 18.13, it looks like 22.5 is going to win. So the direction of motion is actually now going to be in this direction, right? Where this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, and this is negative, right? Right now, make the direction of motion to be positive. All right. So you can do this two ways. You can do it as like a couple system. So you can like sort of like undo this, right? And make it all move that way. Or you could do it individually whichever you want, okay? Um, so, if I were to do it as a couple system, you can say F, well, let's, let's draw it out. So here is my M2. M2 has tension going this way. F G2 going this way, and then we have M1, and tension going this way, and FG X1 going that way, and we have indicated that this is the positive direction. So, sum of all forces for the whole system is equal to m total times a. Sorry. And then sum of all forces for the whole system is equal to m total times a. So that is basically m1 plus m2 times a. Okay? All the forces. I have FG2 plus tension plus tension plus FGX1, right? Now, let's give directions as we set them equal to each other. So M1 plus M2A is equal to FG2 is positive minus first tension plus tension minus FGX1. Are we okay with that? Right. So notice how these two will, you know, add up to zero. So if we plug in the values now, okay, this we have M1, which is uh, 3.7 plus 2.3 times A is equal to FG2, which is 22.5 minus 18.13. So my acceleration of the whole system now is equal to 0 0.73 meters per second squared. 
So this acceleration is this way at that speed, at, at that acceleration, and this way at that acceleration. Okay? So this will be accelerating downwards at 0.73. This will be going up the incline at 0.73 meters per second squared. So that was part A. Part B. What about part B? What are they asking for part B? Uh, well, we already did part B then, right? The part B is right here. The direction of acceleration is, you know, for... So for part B, the direction of acceleration for M2 is down. Right? I mean, that's obvious. This, this is going to go straight down. And then for part C, you have to find the tension. All right, so, well, we could, you could simply use this one or this one. It doesn't matter which one you use, right? I guess if you want to use, you know, M2, it's probably easier, right? So it's... Um, Sum of all force 2 is equal to M2A, and then, and then sum of all force 2 is, I have FG2 plus the tension, right? So M2A is equal to positive FG2 minus the tension, right? Therefore, my tension is equal to Fg2 minus M2A. And my tension is equal to Fg2 is 22.5 minus uh, 2.3 times 0 0.73. Therefore, my tension should come out to uh, 20.8. Newtons. Is that good? Now, how could how could Doc and I make this more challenging? Well, what if I put two inclines with two different angles? Is that going to be really impossible? No, it's just you just have to just calculate, you know, this twice, you know, F, FGX twice, and compare those two, and you should be able to uh, handle it, right? So, once you know the bigger picture, this is really not that bad. All right, all right. Any questions? Can we move on? Alrighty. All right, here we have a, a one kilogram mass on a frictionless inclined plane is connected to um, two kilogram mass as shown. The pulley is massless and frictionless. So we have two kilogram masses attached, uh, acted on by an applied force, upward force, right, of six newtons and has a downward acceleration of 5.5 meters per second squared. So we know that this has acceleration of 5.5 meters per second squared downwards. So we're going to consider this direction to be positive. Because we want to know, right? So since we're going to call this direction positive, because that is the direction of motion, right? This acceleration is positive 
5.5 meters per second squared. This down is positive now. That means this direction is positive, right? And this direction is negative, and this direction is negative. Okay? So if we were to draw some force diagram, this force is applied force. So we know that this will have Fg going down like so. And this will have tension going up like so. All right. Then this will have tension going this way. Now, this tension here is the exact same as this tension because the pulley is frictionless and massless. Okay. And this will have Fg1, or this will be Fg2, I guess, if you want to say it that way. Right? And this Fg1 can be broken up into its components here of is FGY1 and FGX, FGX1. And this angle here is beta. Okay. So this FGX1 is M1G sine beta. And this one here will be M1G cosine beta for my FGY, right? And then we have F normal, okay, going this way. I guess I could have made the tension blue like this. All right, so these three forces act on one kilogram. These three forces act on the two kilogram, okay? But which forces are responsible for sli this sliding? It's just FGX1 and tension, because these vertical forces will not really make it go up and down along this incline, right? This thing's not going to levitate off and accelerate upwards, or it's not going to go through the incline. So these two forces will cancel each other out. But these two forces will make this accelerate at 5.5 somehow. Okay? So um, what should we find here? Let's see. A. What is the tension acting, uh, connecting the cord? So you, we, we could find tension now, okay? Um, we can use any one of these. We can use this one or this one, okay? You take your pick, really, right? So maybe we should find what this beta is, because we don't know what this beta is. Okay, so let's take a look at this first for mass one, okay? Here, sum of all force one, sorry, sum of all force one is equal to M1A. Now remember, the acceleration is same throughout, which is 5.5 .5 meters per second squared, okay? And sum of all force one is equal to, now we're only gonna look in the x direction, direction of motion. So I have basically F, a tension, I have tension, plus I have F G X one, are the two forces that's gonna make it accelerate that way. So M1A is equal to 
And since this direction is positive, my tension is positive, my FGX is positive. So tension plus FGX. So when I solve for tension here, my tension is equal to right, M1A minus MG sine beta. Okay. So this is good to know, but we don't know the beta, so we can't really do anything with this yet. Let's take a look at M2. M2. This M2 is sum of all force 2 is equal to M2A. There are three forces acting on this, and they are basically FG2 plus tension plus F, the applied force. However, we have to give directions to these. So my M2A is equal to FG2. That's positive because that's the direction of motion. Tension is pointing in the opposite direction of motion, so it's negative. This apply force is also pointing in the opposite direction, so that's also negative. Okay? So my M2 which is 2 kilograms times acceleration of 5.5 .5 is equal to FG2, which is 2 times 9.8. No. Again, I did not put negative 9.8 in here. I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to keep repeating that. Minus tension, minus 6 newtons. This is six newtons. So if you solve for tension, I guess you'll get something like 2.6 newtons as your tension. Now that you calculated that, let's plug that into this equation to figure out beta. All right, so here, I guess, 2.6 now is equal to right, 1 times 5.5 .5 minus 1 times 9.8 times sine of beta. Okay. So what do you get? Well, you know, you get 2.5. 2.6 minus 5.5 .5 over negative 9.8 is equal to sine of beta. So your beta is equal to um, sine inverse of all this mess right here, right? So my beta comes out to 17.2 degrees. Oh, sorry. Sorry for not leaving it on the screen right there. It's algebra, so I mean, you know, you know, you know what to do from there. All right. Are we okay so far? Any questions from Cyber World? This is a good problem, okay? We have 10 kilogram monkey climbs up a massless rope. I love massless rope. That runs over a frictionless tree limb. Oh, I love frictionless tree limb. 
and back down to a 15 kilogram box on the ground. What is the magnitude of the least acceleration the monkey must have if it is to lift the box off the ground? So obviously monkey is not you know, massive enough to, if he just hangs on it, right? The tension of this rope is going to be just the weight of the monkey because this is 15 kilograms so it's not going to lift off so it's like you know just nothing different than tying this to the ground really as, as long as the monkey's hanging on it it's going to basically be just the weight of the monkey holding on to this and the tension is going to be the weight of the monkey however if the monkey starts to accelerate upwards by applying greater frictional force to create a bigger tension, right? The tension is going to increase, right? Remember like the bubble person climbing the rope in your note packet, right? So, so if you think about, um, so assume a spherical monkey, okay? So remember that bubble person the tension going up this way and FG going down this way. That tension actually comes from the friction on rope, right? That caused by the monkey, right? But we're looking at just the monkey isolated by itself, okay? So if I were to find, right? Uh, what's going on? Well, here's the box. Here's the box. Now, this box will have FG, right? And it will also have tension going this way. Right? Well, the tension has to be minimum of this FG box, right, where this is FG monkey, right? So, to create a tension that's equal to this weight of the box, monkey has to accelerate. Let's find out how much tension that has to be, right? So, if we were to say sum of all forces for the box, is equal to m box times a right but the what is the uh, acceleration of this it's zero it's, it's on the floor still right we want to know when they're equal to each other so here the sum of all force of the box is equal to right? we have tension we have fg box the acceleration of the box is zero because it's still on the ground. We want to look at it just before it starts to lift off. It doesn't matter which direction you give positive. You know, if you want to make the top going this way positive, that's fine. Okay. So it'd be tension minus FG box because acceleration is zero, so it, it shouldn't matter. Now, now, here, zero is equal to tension minus M box G. So tension is equal to right, 15 times 9.8. So what's my tension? I think I get something like 147 newtons. So the monkey has to create 147 newtons of tension by accelerating upwards. So now let's take a look at what's going on with monkey here. So for part A, sum of all force for monkey is equal to M monkey A, right? A monkey. Because monkey's definitely accelerating. Now, now, 
Um, sum of all force for the monkey. There are two forces, right? And that is, well, I'm going to consider this direction to be positive. Okay, this monkey is climbing up. Okay. So here, I have tension F plus FG monkey, right? I think that's the only two forces we have, really. So if I set them equal to each other, the mass of the monkey times acceleration of the monkey is equal to tension, positive, right, minus M monkey times G. Okay. Well, I could put this, I can put this tension that we calculated into here. So the mass of the monkey is 10. Acceleration of the monkey is what we're looking for. Here I have 147 minus 10 times 9.8. Therefore, my acceleration for the monkey is equal to, this looks like 49, right? Over 10, which is 4.9 meters per second square is for the monkey. All right. Now once he starts to climb up, box is going to start to lift up. Right? And as he climbs up, the box starts to lift up. Now when he stops climbing, it's going to act like an Atwood machine. So as, as the monkey climbs up, this box is going to slowly lift off, right? But monkey realizing, he's like, whoa, what's going on? And then he just say, grabs on tight and not climb up anymore because he's scared. So what's going to happen? As the monkey climbs up, this box climbs up as well. Then when he stops, it's going to go like that. Did everybody get that? All right, so as monkey climbs up, causing this acceleration, which will create a greater tension, that means the box will start to lift up. And then realizing that, it's like, whoa, what's going on? He grabs onto it now, not climbing up anymore. All right? Then the box is going to drop back down again, and the monkey's going to go back up this way, like an atwood machine. All right? So now we can treat this like an Atwood machine, okay, where here I have spherical monkey, again, right, and I have a box, right. Now, the tension is going to be the same, so here's the tension of the monkey. And here's the FG right, of the monkey. Here I have tension and I have FG of the box. We already know FG of the box, which is 147 newtons. Right? We know the mass and then, ten, uh, well, we know this. This is 98 newtons. Mass of the monkey is 10, so 9.8, right? Let's look for the tension. So for part B, you just have to basically use a coupled system. So you know this is going to win. You know this is going to win. So it's going to travel in this direction. So this is going to be positive. This is negative. This is positive and this is negative. Okay? So we can say, okay, um, I guess you could do it like this if you want to. Here's the box. Here's the monkey. Right? And here's the tension. Here's the FG monkey. Here's the tension, and here's the FG box. 
Okay, you could think of it that way as a coupled system. So, what's going on? Sum of all forces for the system, right, is equal to right, to mass total times acceleration of the system, right? So, sum of all force for the whole system is equal to, I have Fg box plus tension plus tension plus Fg monkey. So, M total, which is the mass of the monkey plus the mass of the box times acceleration of the system is equal to, right, Fg box is positive, minus tension, plus tension, minus Fg monkey. All right, so here I have 10 plus 15 times the acceleration of the system is equal to 147. Again, this adds up to 0 minus 98. So hopefully you can figure out the acceleration of the whole system by now. And that should come out to 1.96 meters per second squared. So the monkey is going to get like pulled up. Okay. So that is part B. For part C, what is the tension in the rope? Well, now that we know what the acceleration of the system is, right, we can actually get the tension now, the new tension. Right? You can use either one, it doesn't matter which one you use. You can use this one or this one, monkey or the box, okay? If you want to use the monkey, you can say sum of all force for the monkey is equal to M monkey times A of the system. And sum of all force for the monkey is equal to, right? We have tension. We have FG monkey, right? So M monkey A system is equal to tensions positive minus right F G monkey. So we have here ten times one point nine six is equal to tension minus ninety eight, right? So the tension is equal to um, one seventeen. Point six newtons. So nineteen point six times ninety eight, basically. All right, any questions? Okay, good. Yeah, the next one is this is going to be like kind of tricky. I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to come back to this. I just want to cover this first. So I think that this one's more important than the other one. By the way, uh, the solution, I'm going to post the solution up there. So it's not going to be like you're going to be left completely in blind. But I want to cover this first because I think this is more important for your test. Okay. So here, a woman stands on a spring scale in an elevator. Uh, order the following situation according to the reading, okay? They produce on the scale to highest to lowest, okay? So if you were to think about it, uh, elevator is stationary. When elevator stationary, she's going to read her 
normal weight, right? An elevator accelerates upwards, right? She's going to read more than her weight. So when elevator accelerates downwards, she's going to read less than the weight. So here, this is plus, this is minus, this is equal, this is constant velocity, the same thing as, right? and when elevator cable breaks, what happens? When elevator cable breaks, when she's in a free fall, she will be floating inside the elevator and the bathroom scale will be also floating inside the elevator. So when she tries to step on it, the bathroom scale will just float away. So she will weigh nothing. She'll be weightless, literally. Okay? So, if we were to think about this, okay, in more general terms, let's think about a free body diagram. Assume a spherical woman. She will measure her weight by measuring her normal force as supported by the spring scale. So, F normal is what she's really reading when she's reading the bathroom scale. The FG acting on the scale, right? Now, sum of all forces is equal to MA, and then sum of all forces is equal to F normal plus FG, okay? I will consider just going up direction positive, just to make it you know, easy safe. That means even though the direction of motion can be uh, downwards, I'm going to call that negative on the downside, going down. Therefore, MA is equal to right, F normal positive minus FG. So F normal is what you're really looking for here. So your F normal is what the bathroom scale would read. Therefore, it is mg plus ma, depending on the acceleration. If you're accelerating upwards, it's positive. If, it, if you're accelerating downwards, it's negative. So, a going up is positive. A going down will be negative. So depending on what acceleration you have, okay, you're going to have either bigger than your weight or less than your weight. But if your acceleration is zero, then your F normal would just measure your weight. So what's going on with part A? For part A, your acceleration is zero. Therefore, your F normal is equal to mg. For part B, cable breaks, right? Then your acceleration is basically negative 9.8 because you are accelerating as g, right? Therefore, your F normal is equal to zero. C, elevator accelerates upward, so your acceleration is positive. Therefore, your F normal is greater than your mg. Right? Matter of fact, your F normal is equal to mg plus ma. Part D, your accelerating downwards. That means your F normal is less than your mg because 
f normal is equal to mg plus m times negative a. And e, when moving at a constant velocity, your acceleration is zero. Therefore, your f normal is equal to mg. So what's the greatest? So you see is the biggest. And then you have a and e, right? And then you have d. And then you have b, which is 0. Is that okay? All right. All right. All right. S spring scales. Okay, spring scales. An object is hung from a spring balance attached to the ceiling of an elevator. The balance reads 65 newtons when the elevator is standing still. So basically, that's your Fg, right? So you can simply say your Fg is equal to mg, which is equal to 65 newtons. A, what is the reading when the elevator is moving upward with constant speed of 7.5 meters per second? Well, for part A, my acceleration is zero because it's moving at a constant speed. Okay? So let's do a free body diagram here. All right? So what's the force acting on this mass? We have tension and we have Fg. So, sum of all force is equal to ma, sum of all force is equal to, right? Which, you know, which way do you want to make positive, right? You want to make up positive? Let's make up positive. So, tension plus Fg. So, ma is equal to tension minus Fg. This tension is the scale reading, just like the normal force is a scale reading for the bathroom scale. Because that tension is what's going to pull this spring this way to cause the needle to move, right? So this is important. So for part A, we'll be using this. So, tension then is equal to mg plus ma, sort of like the normal force equation, huh? So, tension is equal to mg plus ma. So, tension here is equal to 65 plus, what's my mass? My mass is equal to 65 divided by 9.8, and that comes out to 6.63 kilograms. So here, 6.63 times zero. So my tension is 65 newtons. What about for part B? What is the reading of the balance? Um, when the elevator is moving upward with speed of 7.6 meters per second while decelerating at the rate of 2.4 meters per second squared, it should be. That should be squared. So it's moving upward, but my acceleration is actually in the downward direction because it's slowing down going up. 
So my acceleration is in the negative direction of 2.4 meters per second squared. Now we say tension is equal to mg plus ma. Therefore, tension is equal to six, well, six, this is 65 newtons actually, right? Plus 6.63 .6 times negative 2.4. So my tension is equal to 49 newtons. Okay. This looks like the problem here. A spring scale is fastened to the ceiling of a railway car. When one kilogram block is hung from the scale, it reads 12 newtons and is oriented as shown in the figure. What is the approximate acceleration of the car as measured by the observer at rest on the ground outside of the car. Wow. So if you think about this, this one kilogram block should have FG going straight down. Okay. So here is the block, let's say. Let's draw the forces acting on this. Here's the FG. Here's the tension. This tension is causing this scale to read 12 newtons. Does that make sense? No? This FG is just 9.8 newtons. So, what's going on? This tension has Tx and Ty. I should have made this blue. Okay. So, what's going on? When I add these two forces together, vectorially, it should produce 12. But we know that Ty and Fg has to equal to each other. How? Let's take a look. Sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to m a y. So looking at y direction. So sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to, I have t y and I also have uh, 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 f g. Therefore, therefore, if I were to look at m a y is equal to t y, which is this angle here, is theta, which makes this angle theta because. Uh, what is that? Uh, vertical angles are congruent, right? Or, or alternate interior angles are congruent for the uh, 
transversal cutting through two parallel lines. So Ty is really is equal to T times cosine of theta. And Tx is T times sine of theta. OK? So here, my T times cosine of theta minus Fg. The acceleration in the x direction, I mean, a y direction is 0. Because it's not really accelerating up and down. It's only accelerating horizontally on the track. So my acceleration in the y direction is 0. So I can calculate what my theta is. OK, so my t cosine theta minus fg is equal to 0. So t is equal to fg divided by cosine theta, or I should have said just theta is the other way. So cosine theta is equal to fg over t. Sorry, I'm making you write more. So theta is equal to cosine inverse of, right, 9.8 divided by 12. So my theta comes out to 35.25 degrees as my angle theta that this thing will be making. Now let's take a look at the x direction. In the x direction, sum of all force in x is equal to max. And sum of all force in x is equal to just tx. So max is equal to tx, or t sine theta. So my mass, which is 1 times Ax, is equal to 12 times sine of 35.25 degrees. So my Ax is equal to 7 meters per second squared. So this thing is accelerating at 7 meters per second squared to create a phantom force that pushes this way to create the angle of 35.25 degrees, which will create a greater tension on that scale. And that tension happens to be 12. OK? Is that OK? All right. All right. Now we have the time to go back to that climbing dude. Maybe you can take a look at it also. All right. All right, here we go. A figure shown below, right? A man sitting in a boson's chair, right? A, I guess like window washers use these, right? dangles from a massless rope which runs over a massless frictionless pulley again and back down to the man's hand. The combined mass of the man and the chair happens to be 95 kilograms, okay? And since this man is holding on to this thing, right, what force must man pull on the rope for him to rise at a constant speed? Well, at constant speed, he's not accelerating. So if I were to look at this assuming the spherical mass right here. This spherical mass has hand coming out this way. And spherical mass has hand coming out this way. And is holding onto a rope. Basically, it's like this. Right? So what's going on? This tension. This way is the tension, this way is tension, this way is tension, this way is tension, 
and we have FG going this way. So if I were to look at just isolated free body diagram here, sum of all forces is equal to MA, and since he's going at a constant speed, right, constant speed, this acceleration is zero. And sum of all force here is equal to, right, I have twice the tension plus Fg, right? So if I set them up equal to each other, zero is equal to 2T minus Fg. So my tension is equal to Fg divided by 2, or simply 95 times 9.8 over 2. And that tension is equal to 466 newtons. Okay? Now, for part B, now it accelerates upwards. This should be squared, sorry. That should be squared. 1.3 meters per second squared. That's basically saying now, if you were to look at this, this is part B, it is MA is equal to, right, 2T minus MG. This A now is equal to, so 95 times A, which is 1.3, is equal to 2T minus 95 times 9.8. So, my tension now becomes, if you work it out, 527 newtons. And then, for part C, suppose instead of a rope on the right is held by a person on the ground. Well, instead of being held by uh, other, you know, uh, other hand, now this thing is actually going up like this, and then it's held by somebody down at the ground. So now this person is holding onto this rope by himself, right? So now we have FG going down this way, and the tension going up this way, and this tension is same as his weight. Just one times the weight. Okay. I'll stop there. I'll post the solution of that up. Okay. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll post the, um, the, the test on Schoology. Print it out. Three free response questions. You have a whole weekend to work on it. Upload it by Sunday night. Is that good? All right, everybody. So um, have a wonderful weekend. And uh, let's hope we get a president. All right. Have a great weekend.